Imagine something that can lay up to one million eggs in a single summer season. No, I'm not talking about the beloved mosquito. I'm talking about zebra mussels. I would think at some point everyone has or will use the many lakes in our region for swimming, boating, and fishing. I am a longtime resident of Detroit Lakes and use the lakes for those reasons. I keep close tabs on the zebra mussels and other invasive species because of the destruction it can have on our lakes. It is important to be aware of invasive species and to follow the right steps to prevent other lakes from becoming infected. I'm first going to describe what a zebra mussel is and where it came from. According to the Merriam website online dictionary, a zebra mussel is a chiefly freshwater Eurasian Lamo Ranch mollusk that was accidentally introduced into the Great Lakes and has spread to other waterways where it colonizes and causes water pipes and competes with native fish for food. According to the Minnesota DNR website, zebra mussels are small, fingernail-sized animals that attach to solid surfaces in the water. Adults are a quarter to one and a half inches long, have a V-shaped shell with alternating yellow and brownish stripes. Each female can produce up to one million eggs in a single summer season. Tracy Hansen, a Minnesota conservation officer, says that they use the same calculation on zebra mussels as they do fish. That is that only 1% of these eggs survive and become villagers, a microscopic baby, in an interview on March 18, 2012. This is still unknown. However, even if only 1% of these babies survive, that still is 10,000 new zebra mussels for every female that lays eggs. Encyclopedia Britannica's online states that they made their first known attack in Europe in the early 19th century and were carried probably in ship water ballast to North America about 1986. Their invasion of all the Great Lakes has led to devastating effects on the lake's native mussel and fish populations. They were first found in the Great Lakes in 1988 and since have spread to a handful of lakes and rivers in Minnesota and throughout the U.S. These are all where the zebra mussels are currently as of 2010 in the United States. There is no method of getting rid of these animals. Here you can see the different sizes. Um, now that we know what a zebra mussel is and where it has come from, let's take a look at the effects in our region. Once introduced into a lake, it takes little time for residents of that lake to notice the effects. Again, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica online, they proliferate quickly and adhere to, in great numbers to virtually any surface in the water. The ferocious mussels disrupt food by wiping out phytoplankton and their massive clustering on water intake valves and pipes, bridge abutments, and other structures can cause commercial damage. Phytoplankton is a small organism that other mussels and smaller fish eat. According to Tracy Hansen, there are the, they are the only freshwater species of mussels that attach themselves to surfaces and don't let go. Zebra mussels also filter the water, which in turn increases water clarity. This may sound good, but if the water gets clearer, more sunlight reaches greater depth and the more vegetation grows, causing the lake to become extremely weedy. Zebra mussels attach to other native mussels in lakes and rivers, killing them, many of which are already endangered species. As you can see here, here is a shopping cart that was found in a lake covered in zebra mussels along with a boat motor and a beer bottle. That is the inside of a fish and there's zebra mussels inside the fish. And here they are attached to other mussels. Um, they surround them and 
cause them so they're unable to open and kill them. The effect on our lakes is extremely destructive. So next we're going to talk about what is being done to stop the spread. According to Tracy Hansen, everyone needs to change their habits when using any lake and be especially cautious after using an infested lake. Minnesota Waters or Organization states voters can help prevent the further spread of zebra mussels and other invasive species by taking a few simple extra precautions. One is to inspect and remove all visible aquatic plants, animals, and mud from boats, trailers, and equipment such as anchors before leaving a water access. Second, inspect and remove all visible aquatic plants, animals, and mud from boat lifts, docks, and swim rafts before transporting them to another lake. Thirdly, drain all water from boats, including live wells, bilges, and bait buckets before leaving an access. The fourth thing is to spray and rinse a boat with high pressure and or hot water and let them dry thoroughly for five days before transporting to another water. Tracy Hansen from the DNR recommends pressure washing with water of at least 140 degrees Fahrenheit or a 21 day drying time. During the winter months, these zebra mussels do die that are attached to equipment out of the water. An increased effort to stop the spread of these and other invasive species this year. Minnesota law enforcement and DNR have all been required to take a course involving these species and the changing laws. The Minnesota law states it is illegal to travel on a public road with zebra mussels attached to a boat or trailer or to have live zebra mussels in your possession. It is also legal to launch or place a watercraft or trailer into uninfested waters of the state with zebra mussels attached. It is illegal to travel on a public road with aquatic vegetation on your boat or trailer, and you are also required to drain water from your boat, such as live, live wells, bilges, and bait buckets before leaving the access of infested water. This input information was gathered from the Minnesota Water Organization website. Please remember to follow the steps when using the lakes, in, lakes this summer because if you don't, fines can range from $50 to thousands of dollars, says Tracy Hansen from the DNR. It is very important to be aware of invasive species and to follow the right steps so that other lakes do not become infected. Now that you know a little bit about zebra mussels and how they affect our lakes and rivers, you can follow the appropriate steps to preventing the spread of these aquatic invasive species to other lakes. Remember, don't move a mussel. I also have some rocks up here that symbolize the sizes of the zebra mussels. These are the little ones. These are the size of the zebra mussels we see in our area and in bigger bodies of water, it can become up to this big. Thank you.